After being blinded as a child, Matt Murdock used his other senses to not only overcome his disability, but to become one of the greatest crime fighters the world has ever seen. But Daredevil is a character in the Marvel Universe. He's not real. A blind person being able to sense objects without the help of some technological aid is just something in comic books and television. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I'm impressed by the breakthroughs science has made in restoring sight to the blind. Jordi LaForge had to wait until the 24th century to get his visor, but there are real blind people that already have theirs. The Argus 2 converts a camera image into electrical signals that can be understood by an implant in the blind person's retina. It essentially reroutes the visual signal around the damaged portion of the person's eye. The voice headset is another visor. It translates video of a person's surroundings into whistles and beeps. Varying volumes and frequencies tell a person where something is and even how bright it is. Even stem cell treatments are now proving successful. People suffering from age-related macular degeneration have had their vision restored after receiving transplants of retinal epithelial cells. But these breakthroughs, though remarkable, aren't what I'm most fascinated by. What I'm most intrigued by is the idea of a blind man, unaided by technology, not only overcoming his limitations, but becoming something greater. And I know I'm not alone in this fascination because pop culture is filled to the brim with badass blind people. There's Zatoichi, the blind swordsman, Mortal Kombat's Kenshi, Avatar's Toph Beifong, even Tommy the Pinball Wizard. But of course, these are all fictional characters. In real life, there are no daredevils. At least, that's what I thought. Until I learned about Daniel Kish. Kish went blind as an infant, but taught himself to navigate using repeated tongue clicks. By listening to how his clicks echo off his environment, he's able to form a picture of the world around him. His human echolocation gives him a sense of an object's distance, size, texture, and density. It allows Daniel to not only go hiking, but ride a bicycle. Scientists have been studying Daniel and other human echolocators to better understand how this works. What they found is that these people are processing the sound information they receive in the same area of the brain that sighted people use to process visual stimuli. This makes sense because sound is composed of waves, just like light is. Their brains are simply making sense of a different kind of wave. When Daniel Kish talks about something in front of him, he sometimes says things like, look at this. He puts things in visual terms because his echolocation allows him to see the world. He's taught this technique to over 500 people as part of his not-for-profit organization, World Access for the Blind. And I have to admit, I'm impressed by both his efforts and his results, but I also remain wary. 500 is a lot of people. Why does Kish need so many soldiers? Daredevil's mentor, Stick, trained one individual, Matt Murdock, and we've all seen what one man can do with these abilities. Imagine what someone could do with an army of Daredevils. It could prove an incredible force for good, or something decidedly more sinister. I just want to let Daniel Kish know that until we know what your intentions truly are, I'll be watching you. If you haven't read or listened to Frank Herbert's Dune, then you should, like now. If you have, then the Audible book I'm recommending this month is its sequel, Dune Messiah. The reason I'm recommending this is a bit of a spoiler, so if you don't want to hear the spoiler, turn your volume all the way down. Paul Atreides is stricken blind and becomes even more awesome. Okay, we're back. Audible is the sponsor of this episode, and it's sponsorships like this that allow the spice to flow. So if you like this series and want to lend some support, go to audible.com rusty and download any of the thousands of books they have on offer. You can even trade in a book if you start listening and decide you want something else. So for instance, if you're listening to an H.P. Lovecraft book and worry you're going to go insane with fear, you could trade it in for a book about puppies. And if this is your first time going to audible.com slash rusty, your book is free. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes, check out some of the previous ones, follow me on Twitter, and be sure to let me know what superpower you want.